Good morning, church. Again, I want to bless you as we're going through these psalms. Psalm 16 is a wonderful psalm. It's actually called a golden psalm. It's one of those that just have so much in it that they call it one of those special, special psalms. Again, as we prepare our hearts, I ask that you take time today to just ask God to, to join our hearts with people who are praying right now. People from around the world have taken this month and are praying, seeking deliverance from trouble, praying for their nations, praying for their governments, and we want to ask God's blessing with them. We also want to take time and just say, God, break evil. It's time to see evil broken, and it's time to see God's people rise up in the power that they have. And finally, we just want to make sure that we ask for a harvest. We want to ask God that there be fruit, that coming out of this month will be a harvest of people coming to faith in Jesus. So gather together, read God's word, join with another person, pray, because there's power in praying together. I encourage you to take some time and fast. I encourage you to read the Psalms with us and write down, write down what God's speaking into your life. And again, if you have something that you feel God has for us as a church, write it down and send it. Okay, Psalm 16, let's read. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Again, I'm going to stop there for just a moment because there's two words there. Sometimes we say, oh, it's the same word. It's not. It says, I say to you, the Lord, that's Jehovah, my covenant God, you are my Lord, you're my Adonai, you are my all-powerful God. So it's saying, you covenant God are the all-powerful God. The one that I am covenanted with, you are the most powerful and all-powerful God in the whole world. So David is saying, preserve me, O God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, and I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrow of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot, and the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let my Holy One see, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Okay, there's lots here. This is actually a special psalm that talks about Jesus. It's called a prophetic psalm. And in this passage, you will see passages and portions that you will read in the New Testament. Paul talks about it in Acts 13, and Peter talks about it in Acts chapter 2. They use this to describe Jesus. And so we need to recognize that we're seeing Jesus in this psalm in various places. And as a result, we see what David is saying we should look like. Because if Jesus is here, he's calling us to look like that. As we take a look at this psalm, we'll also see that there are some very specific things that he says. First of all, he describes how the wicked aren't going to survive. They're not going to survive. They, their life will be full of sorrow. But ours, ours are blessed. 
Our days are filled with blessing, their fullness of joy in our days. We look at those who take refuge in the Lord and God says, they're going to be salt. They're going to stand strong. We're going to look at, at uh, putting God always first. If you put God first, his promise in this passage is you, he, we will never be shaken. You'll never have something come and shake our lives to the point where we lose everything. God says, you'll never be shaken. Instead, our future, he says at the last, in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our life is going to be the re seeing powerful things that last for eternity. Okay, what does God want us to do here? God says here, make the Lord, who's our covenant God, the Lord, who is the all-powerful one, make him our refuge. Put him always before your eyes. Let's start today and the rest of this month and just always before our eyes is the Lord Jesus. And finally, let's place our future in his hands. Let's pray. Father, as we come here this morning, we see the power and the privilege of putting the name of our covenant God in front of our eyes every day, all the time. Lord, there's blessings, there's protection, there is life, there's joy. And Father, as we choose to put you first in everything that we say and do. Lord, your blessing comes to your people. Father, we speak that today. We speak that over our lives. That is our God, the all-powerful God, will take care of his children. This all-powerful God will release into us his blessing. Blessings that don't last for a few years or months, they last for eternity. It's joy that will be unending. Father, we need to have this so that our world sees it. Our world sees that our God is different. Our God is different from every other one. No one else can give joy like you. No one else can release blessing like you. No one else can Take the sorrows of this world and transform it into joy. Father, today, as your children pray, empower them with joy. Empower them to be a people that are filled with your blessing and filled with your joy that every day as they put you before their eyes, they'll never be shaken. Father, my prayer, my prayer is that this day, people will see a joyful church. Lord, as, as Satan seeks to bring discouragement and shake us, Lord, may your joy hold us firm. And may the world seek after you. In Jesus' name, amen.